Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. For those of you who aren't aware, I'm old. Well, old by YouTuber standards, anyway. And when I was your age, we didn't have all these fancy newfangled games. But we did have quite a few games that had seemingly endless amounts of content hidden inside them. And one such game was Diablo 2. Now, I've never been all that great at Diablo 2. While I've probably sent over a hundred characters to their deaths, I've only beaten it from front to back, hidden cow level included, once. And today, I'm gonna prove that Pass Lemon was a complete and total scrub. Because not only are we going to attempt to beat the game, we're gonna make Diablo 2 beat itself. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Thorns Only Run. So, while my paladin tries to remember how to play the game after not playing for almost a decade, let me explain what it is we're trying to accomplish here. Essentially, we're going to try to beat the game without using a single offensive skill. How, you ask? Why, with the Thorns ability, of course. This ability makes it so that enemies who hit me take a certain amount of damage, while I just have to sit there and wait for them to die. Should be a good time. I will cleanse this wilderness. Easy there, buddy. That's not your job today. In fact, let's make sure you can't act on your own. First things first, I remove my weapon. Then, I send my boy around the entire first map, looting every chest, barrel, and loose rock that he can find. Any enemies that are out there have to be avoided for now, so I'm careful to keep my stamina nice and high so we can scurry away as needed. It's a pretty big map, and we can reload all the loot inside it by saving and quitting, so after covering as much area as I'm comfortable with, we can start the loop all over again. By the way, this is definitely a video that's going to be more fun to listen to than to watch. I'm the kind of player who needs the map front and center when navigating, so it's, you know, kinda always there. Sorry about that. Second monitor gang, represent! <coughs> I make my way into the cold plains, the second area of the game, where I quickly find a teleporter and discover exactly where the wild things are. This area is a bit more dangerous and full of enemies, but it has slightly better loot as well. That chipped skull we just picked up is exactly what we needed. Back in town, I talk to the townsfolk, where I sell all the loot I've been collecting on my travels, then search the blacksmith's inventory, looking for a piece of armor that either has an empty socket or the special skill I'm looking for. No luck this time. I do a few more loops, saving and quitting each time, until eventually I get lucky and find a buckler with one open slot for the low, low price of 42 gold. Don't mind if I do. And with this new buckler, we can now insert our chipped skull into it. Which, when inserted into shields, gives the shield the thorn ability, making all enemies who hit me take four damage. It begins. But Lemon, I hear you say, four damage? That's awful. How long is this gonna take? Eh, uh, not very long, I'd say. Now granted, these are the early game monsters, and even now there are enemies who take several hits before they go down. But each one that goes down gives me XP, which means I now have a way to level up my character. Welcome to the laziest playthrough of Diablo 2. I bet you didn't know that it was an idle game, did you? What's worse is that my shield is actually pretty decent, which means that more often than not, the enemies don't even do any damage to me. And before you know it, I've done it. My paladin has reached level 2. I dump all my stat points into vitality, because if we're going to get hit, we're going to need a beefy health pool. Then put my first skill points into prayer, which gives me an aura that slowly regenerates health at the cost of my mana. Leaving it on will drain my mana regardless of whether or not I need the healing, but as you can see here, my mana does regenerate slowly over time, which means we technically have unlimited health regeneration. It's slow as molasses, but unlimited. Time to start our first quest, clearing the den of evil. I set my left and right click actions to throw, just to make sure my paladin never tries to cleanse the wilderness with his fists, then begin my descent. The den consists of monsters we've already seen outside, but it's right around here I realized there was a complication. Enemies that don't do physical damage don't take thorn damage, which means this shaman here can roast me alive with fireballs and never break a sweat. Thankfully, he does have a melee attack if you get close enough to him, so the only strategy you need to beat him is to dodge his magic attacks until he decides to beat himself. But this does bring up another issue that I noticed earlier in the run. Much like the shaman's magic attacks, I noticed that ranged attacks against me weren't triggering the thorn effect either, which means the only enemies I can kill are the ones who have melee attacks. Confidence... fading. Oh hey, second wind. After several returns to the rogue camp, I finally clear my way to the mini boss of the den, Corpse Fire. He hits harder than other minions, so I end up having to use a potion in the middle of our non-fight, but that's all she wrote. At this point in the run, I'm already level 4. Every skill point I've gotten thus far has gone into prayer, 
partly because the extra health regeneration is nice to have, but mostly because the rest of my options aren't exactly useful at the moment. No, what we're really waiting on is level 6, because as soon as I reach it, we get access to a much better skill, Thorns. And yes, this is why I chose the Paladin class. The Thorns skill does the exact same thing that the Armor skill does. The only difference is that it has a larger radius, and that it does significantly more thorn damage than my armor ever could. But we've still got two more levels to go before then. I clear the Den of Evil, return to Akara for my free skill point and a refill of my scrolls and potions, then head to the Cold Plains to do it all over again. The enemies here are pretty strong, doing both more damage and taking more hits to kill, but the XP is definitely worth it. However, getting greedy and trying to get the accelerated XP requires a bit more... active roll and I have to be careful to refill my health with potions any time it begins to get too low. But eventually, I find the perfect strategy, sitting on the teleporter. The mobs dish out as much damage as I can take, and before I die, I teleport back to the rogue camp for a free health refill. Then it's right back to the whomping block for more damage and more XP. And due to all the wild things being boss minions, they drop an excessive amount of experience, which means it's only a few minutes before I suddenly reach level six and get the pleasure of the thorn skill. If this works as intended, all the melee damage I take from enemies should be returned at a rate of 250%. And judging by enemies who used to take several hits now dying in one, I think it's safe to say that we're on the right track. More damage means less waiting around and faster XP gain, which in turn feeds my thorn skill, which will give me even more damage and faster XP gain, and on and on it goes. Rakanishu, my guy, how's things? You still shouting your name everywhere you go? Rakanishu! Alright, good talk. So yeah. At this point in the run, the main goal is to just gain as much XP as possible and slowly make my way through the main quests. It's worth pointing out that we can't do every quest. For example, the next quest that is given to you is to kill Blood Raven, a ranged only boss, which means she's a lost cause. But luckily for us, Blood Raven is an optional boss, so rather than dwell on that, I push forward through the underground path, gaining another level and boosting my thorns damage to 290%, then make my way out to the Dark Woods. A quick check against all the new enemies in the area shows that I'm still doing enough damage to one-shot everything, so we can keep pushing forward. And on top of that, I also found something very useful for our build, a Paladin Scepter with a plus one to her Thorn skill. The wonderful part about the Scepter is that it only has to be in my hands for me to get the effect. I don't need to physically use it against enemies to get the bonus, so it's essentially just a free level up so long as I'm holding it. Speaking of level up, give me that ding! Another level, another point into Thorns pushing our counter damage to 370% with an additional 16 damage on top of it. And this is just with four points into the skill. Imagine what it's gonna look like at later levels. You know what? I think it's time for a harder challenge. Let's tackle the tower. Well, there's certainly harder enemies down here, but it's not exactly, you know, hard. At this point, so long as the damage isn't overwhelming, I can literally just sit with my inventory open, drink a health pot whenever I start to get too low, and just wait for the mobs to unalive themselves. And I don't even have to return to town for new supplies either. Most of the mini bosses I run into, and several of the regular mobs, all drop health pots, replenishing my stock, or even giving me more than I had when I started the fight. Let's see, the Countess should be around here somewhere. Well, that's subtle. Ah, there she is. Would you mind just throwing yourself onto your own sword? <sighs> Thanks. And there you go, another quest down. Easy game for babies. I make the rounds, picking up any experience I can, until I find the big tree. You know the one. Then, after studying the Scroll of Inifus, I touch all the obelisks until I get the spell to work, getting peppered with arrows the whole time. Honestly, take a hint, would you? Bada bing bada boom, Tristram met an untimely doom. I free Deckard Cain from his prison, collect all the free XP that's just walking around, then make my way into the monastery. Not much to see here. The enemies here all die in one hit, so I can simply run through the area collecting experience, and even the smith, a mini boss that's known for being difficult for any character who doesn't have the proper gear, goes down in three hits. Has Diablo 2 always been this easy? Don't get me wrong, there's still a few issues. The skeleton mages are a complete pain in my ass. But at this point, this run has just become a speed run. But, you know, without the speed. I push my way through the catacombs, and before you can say, Stay a while and listen, I'm sitting outside of Andariel's door. Time for a proper boss. I head back to town and use my immense wealth to stock up on health pots and poison antidotes, drop a safety portal in case I happen to die, then begin the process of pulling out any mob groups I can. Half of the challenge with Endariel is all of her minions, so we might as well take away some of her advantage. It's a bit slow going, since the Tainteds have a nasty habit of refusing to use their melee attack, but eventually it's time to face Endariel herself. 
Andariel has three moves, and all of them deal poison damage. She has a melee attack, which is the one we want, a single spitball of poison, and a wide sweeping poison spray. I think you can see why we brought a bunch of antidotes now. I do my best to play keep away whenever my health is low, and even go so far as to level up in the middle of the fight to get some health back and increase our damage output. And though there were a few close calls, it isn't long before Andario goes down without a single hit. And just like that, Act 1 is complete. I replenish my coffers by selling all the loot I found on Andy's body, then talk to the ferry service to get a move on to Act 2. Welcome to Loot Galeen, City in the Sand. Hope you brought some sunscreen. It's supposed to be a hot one. But with a new area brings new inventory, which I spent an uncomfortable amount of time pouring over. But after finding a few pieces of armor that drastically increase my defense, and a shield that has three sockets, which I will undoubtedly be shoving as many human skulls into as I can, I make my way into the rocky wastes and begin testing my metal against the new enemies. And wouldn't you know it, most of them use javelins. Fantastic. But hey, at least the ones that don't give massive amounts of experience. So we got that going for us. So good news, bad news. The bad news is that we're going to have to start pouring points into strength if I want to wear armor that actually has enough defense to keep me alive. What, the good news? Oh, that's actually been replaced by a new horrible one. There are so many enemies in this act that only use magic. So very, very many magic users. Let me just buy a few of these. Just, just a few. J just a few of these. But hey, at least we've got eight levels in thorns. That's 530% and 32 damage per hit. Absolutely disgusting. I push my way through the sewers, find and kill Radamant, the target of my current quest, then run into the dry hills looking for... uh... I'll be honest, I kind of forgot. But it's out here somewhere! Hey, wait a minute, I didn't know there were Firebomb Academy members out here! Huh, kind of makes me want to do the Firebombs only run I had planned a few years ago. Nah. Hey look, an accurate representation of what it's like every time I go outside! God, I hate mosquitoes so much. Oh right, I'm supposed to be looking for the Heradric Staff and Cube! I'd kinda given up and was just grinding out levels. 650% counter damage, by the way. I don't even know what to say about that. Oop, scratch that. We just gained another Thorns for free. Well, I mean, not for free. It cost 15,000 gold, but still. Alright, a little more grave robbing, a little more running and screaming, and would you look at that? It's the Heradric Cube. You thought Escape from Tarkov invented the backpack inside a backpack game? Nah, man. Diablo 2. And before anyone says it, yes, I'm aware the graphical quality of this video keeps changing. I was an idiot and recorded it on two different machines. You thought you were going to be able to get all snarky in the comments today, didn't you? I'm taking away your power! Oh hey, the maggot lair. That's the one place I needed. Why does it look like that on the map? This place is easily one of my least favorite maps to run through. The tight quarters make it impossible for most players to take full advantage of their spells and abilities. Funnily enough though, this doesn't really affect us that much. Just run up to the nearest enemy, wait for them to die, then proceed to the next one. Not much of a difference than my normal strategy, if I'm being honest. And before long, I've found my way to the end of the cavern. Mama Beetle is here, and doesn't have any kind of melee attack, but why worry about that when I can just steal the staff right from the chest? Moving right along. Let's see, we got the cube, we got the staff, now we just need to go to the Claw Viper Temple for the... other... part. Eh, not a whole lot to see here. The enemies here all like their melee attacks. It's working well for them. Not so fun fact about poison in Diablo 2, it brings you down to 1 HP, which means you can't technically die from poison. So if you're holding more teleport scrolls than you know what to do with, feel free to use those suckers as a free antidote if the substance running through your veins starts to become more poison than blood. I grab the amulet off the spooky death altar, jam them all together inside the Heradric Cube, get me a completed Heradric Staff, then push my way into the palace which is suspiciously full of demons at the moment. I dodge and weave my way through the absolute bullet hell of a dungeon, touch the unassuming device just lying in the middle of the floor, and... Huh. Did I just walk into a bag of holding? So yeah, this is the Arcane Sanctuary. There's a special book I'm looking for in here, and there's one of four ways to go. Watch any Diablo 2 speedrunner, and you'll know the pain this map causes. Unlike every other area of Diablo 2, there's no way to know which path is correct. The game randomly selects where the book will be, and your only option is to push your way to the end of each corridor. And pray. I both hate and love this place. The aesthetic is awesome, and I love that the game is able to portray the feeling of running around in an MC Escher painting. But I also hate the feeling of running around in an MC Escher painting. But we didn't have to suffer for too long. I got a bit lucky and found the end of the map on the second path. Mr. Llama, eat your heart out. I grabbed the book, completely ignored the summoner, ran around the Canyon of Magi trying to find the right temple, made a bunch of friends while inside, found my way to the end of that, and jammed my newly formed staff into the orifice. 
Look, I don't get to pick the names, that's just what it's called. Using my staff blows up a wall, and it's in that room that we'll be facing off against one of the harder bosses of the game. At least from what I remember. So before we dive into there, it's time to go shopping! Health pots for days. Normally, you would also buy thawing potions, because this next boss does frost damage and slows you down. But considering I'm not actually trying to run away all that much, I don't think that'll matter. Alright, let's give this a try. Duriel, aka a giant earwig, with spines on his back. I do not like that mental image I just made. Turns out, Duriel is just as hard as I remember, and it doesn't take long before he slaps me to death. But not to worry, I left a safety teleport just outside the room. And with a little panicked clicking and a lot of running away, we can pick up right where we- Okay, let's try that again. Run in and grab the body, play keep away from Duriel until the health pot can kick in, and let Thorns do all the rest. There we go, much better. That's another big boss down, and Act 2 completed. Moving right along. Time for Karast. It's a giant swamp level, because every game must have a giant swamp level of some sort. I'm not given any quest at the start of this act, so I guess I'll just wander off into the jungle- Hey, wait a minute, the Dark Wanderer. Isn't that the main bad guy? Huh, because he had somewhere to be. Oh, no, wait, he turned into giant leeches with arms. You know, as you do. Alright, you know the drill by now. Check out the new inventory and make any upgrades as needed, then run in circles as all the enemies in the room end themselves on my shield, looking for whatever quest I'm supposed to be doing next. I do several little fetch quests, giving one object to an NPC, then taking the object they give me to another NPC just across town. You guys do have legs, right? And eventually, something triggers, and I get my storyline quest. Find an eye, huh? Alright, not the weirdest thing I've been asked to do in a video game. As with any area, there are several enemies who I can reliably just run through for free experience, and several that I have to avoid like the plague. Spearmen and Entwives? No problem. Blowed out snipers? Yeah, no, Dark Souls has taught me enough to know that I should run away from those. Eventually, I find my way to the spider cavern. Let's find us an eyeball. Excuse me, good fellows. Have any of you seen an eyeball? No, that's fine. Do, do you think Deckard would notice if I gave him a spider eye instead? I mean, they have eight of them, and it's not like they're using them anymore. Nope, oh, hang on, never mind. False alarm. We don't have to mutilate the bodies today. Wait, I have to find this guy's brain now, too? Do spiders have brains? Asking for a friend. More casual running through the jungle, more trying and failing to make friends. Everything I love around me is dying! Oh, hey, Ithrun. 18 points into thorns for 930% counter damage and 120 raw. So many points into strength and vitality that it hurts, and still no understanding of where to go. I've gone so far into the jungle that the enemies are changing colors, but still no luck on this brain I'm looking for. Wait a minute. Oh, thank god, there it is. The Flare Dungeon. Progress. The dungeon certainly lives up to its name. The damn thing is jam-packed with the little dudes. But after getting extremely unlucky and exploring the entirety of the dungeon map, I finally found it. Kaleem's brain and a new level to boot. Alright, now we can- Okay, Kaleem, what the hell, man? You and I are gonna have some words. Luckily, while looking for the Flare Dungeon, I actually found the sewers earlier. So, at least we don't have to run around the jungle again. And with only minimal searching, we've got it. Kaleem's heart. I swear to Diablo, if I have to find this man's foot next, I'm going to shove it up his... flail? Uh, okay, fine. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned it yet, but this run does have a bit of upkeep cost. Unsurprisingly, getting hit over and over again tends to wear down your armor, so you'll probably have to visit your local blacksmith more often than you're used to. That said, so long as you keep putting your gold into your storage chest for safekeeping, you'll probably never lack the funds to do so. The only thing I've been buying is armor upgrades and the occasional scepter that gives me more thorn damage. Eventually, I make my way to Trevinkle, but the welcoming party here is a bit too spicy for my liking. We might have to do a little strategizing here for once. The mages here aren't too hard to bait for a melee strike, so they're not the issue. It's these damn council members. They're extra strong and summon a metric boatload of hydras. Not exactly a good time for my build right now. But I do manage to kill at least one member each time I run in there. And while it took a little finagling to do, I was eventually able to lure out several council members from their hidey hole, which made them much easier to kill. Come on, it's right there. I just need like one good run to nab it. Oh, hang on. That was the last council member. Uh, that works too, I guess. Just throw that into the cube, and there we go. Mission success. Now we just take all the parts we've been gathering, shove them in the cube as well, smush it all together, and there you go. Fancy flail acquired. I put it into my secondary loadout, run back to where I got it, then use it to smash this compelling orb. It's not an enemy, it doesn't count, shut up. And with that done, we can now enter the Durance of Hate. Cool name, did your mom pick it out for you? Oh god, wait, I'm sorry, chat told me to do it! You know, it's getting harder and harder to find an enemy that just uses melee. Not exactly a fan of this new bullet hell I'm playing here. 
Combine that with the lifesteal effect all these bloodlords have, and we're in for a bad time. There's also some mana steal going on here as well. <laughs> but joke's on you, boyo. The Thorn's Aura doesn't use mana. Eventually, my panic screaming leads me down, down, down to Mephisto's cafe, which ends exactly the way you'd expect. Luckily, it looks like Mephisto does have a melee attack, so it's just a matter of luring it out. And more importantly, I need to kill off all these bloodlords that are just out here siphoning all my hard-earned blood. Kinda hard to fight a boss when you're bleeding from every orifice. After getting Mephisto on his own, the fight becomes much easier. I run up into his personal space, giving him general anxiety, and causing him to start slapping me with those big old grippers of his. A few hits later, and that's all she wrote. Mephisto down, Act 3 complete. Time to enter Hell itself. Into the spooky portal, talk to an angel to get my next few quests, then repeat our usual process of upgrading my equipment to better versions. Looking spiffy, amigo. Go get him. Enemies here take 1 to 2 hits, which means we aren't underleveled, and it's looking like the enemies here all have at least one melee attack of some kind. So that's good news as well. You know, despite this area quite literally being hell, it's not too bad. At least, it wasn't until I started bumping into pit lords in the Plains of Despair. That area lived up to its name at least. It's their flamethrower breath attacks. It just melts me down faster than I can drink a potion. Combine that with other enemies hitting you, or worse, multiple flamethrower attacks. Yeah. But, as with the rest of this run, all it takes is a little persistence and a lot of dead paladin bodies strewn about the floor, and we can move on. Man, this run really is the patience elemental run, huh? No wonder I'm actually enjoying myself. In any case, we're looking for the demon that has Ishuel's soul. And wouldn't you know it, there he is. The... the blue one. The one behind all the other demons. Here, hold on. Just gotta play a little ring around the rosy with this pack. If I stand in the middle, I'll just get stuck and demolished. But, so long as I keep chugging potions and keep running in circles, I can whittle the group down to just Ishwell and his buddy Moonpox. And then there was one. Well, despite me doing literally over 1000% of his damage back to him, it's a slow burn. But at least it's manageable now. Just let him slap you around, chug a potion whenever your health dips below 25%, and before you can say, Hello! Ishwell is toast. And would you look at that, the next quest starts right here. According to this dead angel, because that's a thing, I need to take the soul stone I got from Mephisto to a Hellforge. Because reasons. Look, it's a Diablo game. You're not here for the story. You're here because you're a loot goblin like me. I find my way into the River of Flame, casually collecting all the experience as I go, and occasionally getting my helmet pushed in because the game is getting tired of the fact that I'm not playing it right. Look, man, it's not my fault you designed your game this way. You knew what gamers were like. You knew this would happen eventually. Huh. You know, it looks like I don't actually need to find the Hellforge. If I'm reading this right, that's just a side quest. I might be able to take on Diablo already. That said, I'm in Diablo's arena, but he doesn't appear to be home. Sorry, it's been about a decade since I did this, and the muscle memory isn't exactly what it used to be. Just to be safe, I decided to do the second quest anyway. I found the Hellforge, picked up a Hellforge hammer that someone just left lying around, and slowly cleared off the forge itself. Come on guys, how's a man supposed to work around here with all this noise? Ah, there we are. Smash the soul stone, get a few loot drops, and let out all the ghoulies as well. Yep. Definitely an optional quest. Dang it. Well, I didn't want to do this, but I think I'm gonna have to look up how to push forward. Please hold. Alright, so. Turns out, I'm supposed to run around Diablo's arena and click all the seals around it, kill all the enemies that spawn in from said seals, and that'll summon Diablo. Simple enough. Considering we're in the endgame, I decided to upgrade my shield a bit by giving it extra resistance to every type of damage, restock on health pots, then get to work clearing the area. If my understanding is correct, I only need to kill the mini bosses that spawn in, not every single mob. So this shouldn't be too bad. I clear one seal, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and after getting absolutely decimated by the extra fast pit lords that spawned in, I finally get the last seal lit up. That should do it. Except, it doesn't. I don't understand, I thought I killed every boss. Well, turns out, I missed one. Lord De Seis, an extra strong, aura enchanted mage. Uh oh. Now, it may look like he has a melee attack, but after fighting this boss for several minutes and doing some after recording zoom of the footage, you can see that his health isn't dropping. Just to be safe, I double checked the wiki to make sure I wasn't missing anything, and, well, shit. Can't get any more solid than that. So, with that final nail in the coffin, that's it. You cannot, in fact, beat Diablo 2 with just the Thorn's ability. You can get all the way to Diablo himself, which is way farther than this run had any right to reach, but as far as completing the game, it's just not in the stars. 
Now granted, if you didn't want to give up, you could make the run more about being a passive party rather than the thorn skill itself. Hiring a mercenary to kill Desace, using the paladin's conversion skill, or even finding some equipment that has a Nova on hit ability to act as a supplement to your thorns. But this whole run has been about minimal effort, and that's more effort than I'm willing to put in. But I am willing to admit that I don't know much about the ins and outs of this game. So if you know some way to get past Diablo with only thorns, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to take him to town, buy him a nice meal, show him the sights, treat that boy right, you know? But in any case, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.